Hello and welcome to another video. So this one is very dear to my heart because it's about your finances. So I read up a lot on, you know, personal finance, investing, a lot of that kind of stuff. And one of the most amazing books I've ever read was The Barefoot Investor, right? And it basically teaches people, number one, you know, how to get out of debt, how to um, kind of distribute their funds, how to control their money a lot better, how to not have to use your uh what do you call it uh willpower to actually manage your money to have it be all automatic amazing amazing book i encourage everyone to read it especially if you're really really young get onto it straight away i'm 31 now i wish i read it when i was like 10 years old because it's such an easy read the book is nice and big there's not a lot of jargon not a lot not a lot of fancy words and it's just so insightful in terms of managing your finances now in terms of my personal skill set, my skill set was always Excel. It was always data. That's what I do as a, for a living. So I wanted to be able to manage my finances a lot better. You can use apps on like your iPhones and your Androids and all that. But I always felt it never had the real capability and specificity to my life. So I wanted to design something that was a lot more to me. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to create it very easily the concept is this let's say you make in a month I'll pick a round number five thousand dollars in a month right you can just go ahead and spend it right but at the end of the year you're gonna have no money left so what the barefoot investor suggests is you put it into buckets one is gonna be for like investing one is for holidays one is for emergencies one is your savings etc so what I wanted to be able to do is change the values to say, well, if I put 20% in here every month, what does it look like in two years? You know, that kind of thing. So let's do a really simple example. Let's start with the date. Let's say today's date is 1st of, what is the date today? 18th of the 1st? So I'm going to start with the 1st of the 1st, uh, 2019. And I'm not going to do every single day. In my analysis, I do every single day like that. But for this example, we're just going to do on a monthly basis. So I'm going to go first, second, 2019. Okay. And then Excel is going to read that pattern. And so let's go to 2025, let's say. All right. And let's start with income. All right. And every day I'm going to make, let's say, $5,000. And the reason I'm putting it up here is so that it's like a control, right? Uh, format like this so I do I usually do something like this equals 5,000 right and then this one will equal just that one so then if I go actually you know I, I just change my jobs I don't have to redesign this I can say oh actually I only make 4,500 uh, a month now right and let me just reposition because my bum's itchy <laughs> all right so that's your income now you want to set your allocation so the way the book teaches us is you have your daily expenses, right? You have your splurge account, you have your smile, and you have your fire extinguisher, right? And actually there's a fifth one and it's called Mojo, okay? And let me explain how these ones work, okay? Let me just justify everything because I'm OCD that way, okay? And the way it works is a certain amount of this is gonna go into each of these accounts. Okay, some you don't touch, some you do. So for daily expenses, I'm just gonna set some numbers. Let's say we're gonna put 40% into daily expenses. We're gonna put 20% into splurge, 20% into smile. What is that, 80 we're up to? Um, Mojo, we're gonna put, it should be a lot more, 20%. Let's say splurge should really just be 10%. Uh, 10% and this is 20%. Now, I think that is 100 if my math is correct, 100%, okay? And so daily expenses is going to be like your rent, your food, food for the dogs, gas bills, etc., etc. So that's going to be a huge chunk of it. Splurge is a small amount of your income which you can spend on anything you want guilt-free, okay? And what this does is it stops you from overspending. If you just spend off one single account, which is what a majority of people do, it's so easy to overspend. It's there, you'll spend it, okay? What the Barefoot Investor teaches you is if you can't see it, you can't spend it. And that's where the mojo one comes through, which I'll show you in a second. Smile is like long-term expenses. So things like you're going to go on holiday, right? Or you're going to buy your dream car. So you slowly save up for that. 
Fire extinguisher is a fund where in case of emergency, you have funds to cover it. You know, someone gets injured, there's a funeral, right? Or you get a parking ticket, anything where it's like something out of the ordinary, you're good to go. It's a fire extinguisher, a fire extinguisher. So you're there to extinguish the emergency. And the last one is mojos. These are your long-term savings. You do not touch these, right? You only touch this maybe if you're like saving up for a house or some, something like future long-term, okay? So the way to set this is we go equals this one. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to use absolute referencing. And I'm going to lock down just the column multiplied by this 40%. And I'm going to lock down using, again, absolute, uh, absolute referencing, the row number. Okay. And that's so that if no matter where I put it, okay, it will always reference the correct location. Okay. All right. So that's what it looks like very very basic still right and your daily expenses you can consider it's all gone right you spend it on bills and everything now what i also like to do is because this is for a what is this five year period let's get rid of that one okay i want to see how much i've made during that time so let's add a sum function so i can go equals sum all of this let's copy this over right so now I can see in a four year period, I would have saved $64,800, 64,800 in extinguisher, $32,000 for smart, 32,000 for splurge. Now the beauty of this particular method, right? Let me just put a freeze frame. The beauty of this method is, let's say I do my first analysis and I'm like, well, actually I'm not really a big holiday person. So let's set that to 5%, okay? And let's actually do a sum here. So I know how much is actually still remaining in the fund. Okay, so we're at 95%. And really, me and the missus, we really want to save up for a house. So I want to put a little bit more in there. Okay, so 25%. Okay, so that tells me in four years, I'm going to save 81000 Again, more than enough for a deposit. The ones I'm really spending out of are these two. But 32400 on anything I want, that sounds pretty good to me. Okay, so now let's look at the overall. Okay, so now you can have two sections which is what I usually do, is I have an income section. All right, let's merge. And then I have my expense, expenses, right? And what I do is I put like, you know, rent, gas, um, health insurance, um, dog food, anything I want, right, in terms of that. So groceries is a big one, okay? And the way I usually manage this, I can get rid of that part now, is... Rent is always on a monthly basis, so I'm just going to say a thousand bucks, right? Usually, thousand, right? Gas on a monthly is let's say fifty bucks. Um, health insurance is like oh, what's health insurance these days? Let's say thirty bucks. Dog food we spend quite a bit on, say a hundred bucks. Groceries is usually on a daily basis, let's say ten, because I don't like to calculate each time, right? And then we go like this. Now the good thing is. As you kind of move along, you can be like, well, rent's gone up and you change this one and, and so on and so forth, right? So now what I like to do is do a running total, okay? Now you got other, there's other tools out there besides Excel that can do these kinds of things a lot better, right? In terms of like running totals, ones like BI tools and all that, but that's not why we're here. So let's go running total, okay? And what I want to do is uh, the running totals I really want are daily expenses and that's basically it because the rest are like just savings right so what i'm looking at is my daily expenses if i do this one and then we go equals this plus this it will do a running tally of my daily expenses that i'm allowed to spend now if we do the exact same thing for this part right we're going to go equals sum of all this equals sum of all this plus the one above it, right? We're going to have a running total of expenses, right? So running total. And so obviously if we minus one from the other, it's going to quickly tell us, are we overspending or underspending? Okay. And it's going to show it in a graph, which is what I love to see running total. Let's just call it final. So we go equals this minus this. Okay, let's go in here. 
And let's go all the way to the bottom. So I don't think I can double click because table's not set. All right. All right, let's go here. And now we're going to create a graphic. Okay. So if we go insert, we're going to go line. All right. We're going to go select data. Add, uh, what is it? Running total. Okay. Oops. This one. All the way down. And the date. Okay. We're going to come here. Date. And okay. All right. So let me just move this down here. I think we just need a bit more space. Okay. Let's bring this up here. And back when I was in like my early 20s, this is the first time I ever did stuff like this when I was just learning. Right. So what this shows us is actually we're cash positive. So we have more than enough money to be OK. Right. So we don't need to make it really any adjustments. So at the end of it all, we had one hundred twenty nine thousand dollars to burn on daily expenses. And at the end of it, we end up with forty three. We didn't even spend half of that. So what does that tell me? I can do now analysis so I can say, actually, I'm putting away way too much for daily expenses. My salary is really good. So maybe I drop this to 30 percent. How do I look now? Still pretty good. So let's say maybe only 20 percent. Right. 20 percent is no good. Because now I'm not putting away enough. Now I'm in the negatives. So basically it's going to transition. If I go up here, I'm essentially just going to run out of money already at the beginning. So I'm, I'm spending more than I'm earning. So we're going to need to be a little bit more than that. So let's go 25 percent. So 30% seems to be the number, all right? Let's go back, 30%, right? Seems to be the number. But the only problem I see here is if I look at 97,085, this, the difference isn't big enough, right? Because you got unexpected things, you know, you have family parties or you got Christmas or Easter holidays or um, whatever it might be. So you have to have some sort of allowance. So I like to put a little bit kind of like 10%. So let's say 35% might be healthy, right? So we've got 27,000 balance just for those unexpected things. So now what have we got here? We're at 95, so we can actually designate another 5%. So let's do another, let's say fire extinguisher. I like to be safe, All right? 1125. So now for the fire extinguisher, in the case of emergency, I've got plenty to go off, right? Now I'm a pretty safe guy. Maybe I don't need that much. Let's go 15% and here we go 35%. So we can just keep saving because once we have kids, I need something to pay for their education and so on and so forth. Right. So this is kind of this is pretty much how I run my finances. Right. Mine's a lot more complicated, a lot more sophisticated these days because I've been upgrading it basically for over 10 years and really looking ahead. So I'm trying to look, you know, five years into the future to see that. Am I okay? Like, are my are, uh, wages okay? I also do an unemployment analysis, which is at any moment, if I lost my job, right, how long could we survive on our current savings, right? I calculate all that stuff too. So it's really, really useful to have an actual application for the welfare of your family. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please comment below. Give me some likes. And I'll see you next time.